Good afternoon, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with a coronavirus update uh, for this week. Um, it looks like September 29th, Tuesday, today. As usual, we're going to talk a little bit about the numbers and we're going to talk about the coronavirus mutating, what that means. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Uh, to start with, my name is Jeffrey Galvin. I'm a board certified emergency medicine physician. I'm also a functional medicine physician practice in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Been involved with the virus, uh, taking care of patients in the emergency department and in my own clinic uh, since it started. We usually start with the numbers and the numbers today are kind of sobering. 33 million cases worldwide and we just crossed a million deaths. And you know, we've had a million people die of this virus worldwide in essentially nine months because the very first death in China, I believe was, was recorded on January 9th. So that was number one. And here we are less than a year later and we've had a million deaths. In the US, 7.2 million cases, 208,000 deaths. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, the first death in the US was at the end of February. So uh, a lot less than nine months there. Here in my state of North Carolina, 209,000 cases, 3,500 deaths. Our numbers have been doing, doing better than they were before. I think we're at a 5% uh, positivity rate. All those numbers are starting to go up a little bit. Um, you know, unfortunately, it's been a it's been a little bit of a rough week for us here locally. Um, the virus has really kind of hit home. I just before making this video, I was uh, looking at my email and I got an email, you know, sent out to all the parents. I have a daughter who's a senior at Appalachian State, and the the chancellor from Appalachian sent out an email, and uh, a sophomore there has passed away from COVID. You know, they don't, they've got only a few hundred cases, but you know it young people are not immune to the virus. They're less susceptible to, to getting severe complications, but unfortunately we had a kid up there die of COVID. And also here locally, there's a, a local sushi restaurant that um, we, we frequent all the time. And uh, the, one of their long-term sushi chefs, who's only in his forties, just passed away from COVID as well, leaving behind a wife and, and a few da and a couple beautiful daughters. And you know, it's a huge loss for obviously for his family and for everyone. But those things are, are hitting home as this virus goes on, and we need to really be careful of putting our, letting our guard down because, as I've said, we've got rising numbers of cases as we go into the fall and winter. Now, the topic of the video today is mutation. I think you may have seen the reports out of Houston that the virus has mutated, it's more deadly. Well, what does that really mean? And what does it mean practically for us dealing with the virus and us personally and avoiding the virus? Well, first of all, RNA viruses like COVID, the, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, um, mutations are very, very common because there are lots of errors in replication when these viruses are replicating. Most of those errors don't really cause anything. And if, if it's not a beneficial error, error tends to get washed out. But every once in a while, a mutation occurs that is beneficial to the virus, meaning it makes it more effective at, at doing whatever it wants to do, in this case, infecting other people. And what they found in a study of 5,000 viral sequences in Houston was that there is a uh, mutation that I believe first of was noted in, in China to the spike protein um, and basically just one um, one base pair change in the spike protein made it a little bit more transmissible, meaning that the virus was able to infect people a little bit easier. Houston went through two waves of the virus and remember they had a very severe outbreak there. The first wave kind of affected a, a wealthier and older population and in that group about 71% of the virus that was recovered had that mutation. The second wave was much bigger and infected younger people and lower income people. And when they looked at the virus in that second wave, 99.9% .9 of the virus had that, that mutated spike protein. So it was, an, it was an adaptation that was beneficial to the virus. And so the virus, it has evolved to be more contagious. Now, this is a preliminary study, um, but this is sort of expected. We see this with the flu virus as well. The good news is there, there hasn't been any increased mortality or significant change in clinical outcome, meaning that, that just because you can get more easily infected does not mean it's more dangerous. However, we know that everybody that gets infected is in danger of, of having a bad outcome. And so if you can get infected easier, you know, the, the, the virus is in a way trying to get around the things we're doing to prevent it. It's trying to get around masks, distancing, um, 
hand washing. So every mutation that lets the virus transmit itself better is a benefit to the virus and a detriment to us. But, you know, it doesn't mean that the, the world's going to end or anything like that. We just know that the virus is changing and it's going to continue to change and it could even change to be less virulent, which we hope. But right now it does look like the mutation that we've noticed makes it easier to transmit, although probably doesn't have any huge effect on mortality. Uh, I'm going to stop it there. Um, I want everybody, as usual, to look out for each other. Look out for yourselves. Look out for your families. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. I'll be back later in the week with another video. Stay safe. Talk to you soon.